Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Fantasy Football Scout. The Game Week 17 content is ramping up and it's another team reveal. Team reveal mm, seems a bit of a stretch. First draft, I think we'll stick with first draft. Tom, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm good, thank us. Yeah, it's, um, we were just speaking off air then that the, since England went out the weekend, the, the focus seems to be gradually shifting back to FPL now. So had a bit of a tinker a couple of weeks ago. I've had another look at it now. This is where I'm at now. And um, I'm sure it will change between now and game week 17 deadline. But uh, it feels like I'm getting closer. Mm. We had an interesting hot topic on, on site, on the forum, which was, uh, do we think the unlimited transfers was necessary? What do you what do you think of that? Are you happy to be able to have unlimited, you know, transfers to, to mess around with it? Or would you prefer just to have kind of I don't know, had a couple or even just one? I've got to be honest, I don't think I really needed it. No. I mean, this draft this draft which you're gonna see in a minute, I've only made five changes from the game week sixteen to seventeen. So that tells you really it felt like I was in a pretty good place. Mm. Rank was okay. So maybe it would have helped me more. Um, to not have it, but it is what it is. We're always aware of it. It's not like they kind of sprung it upon us, did they? And um, it gives us a chance to kind of focus on maybe a few fixture swings and things like that. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, good. It's almost like they could have, like, I mean, they wouldn't do it, but they could have, like, reset it, you know, because, like, Martinelli, for example, people are reluctant to lose Martinelli because there's so yeah. much value tied up in him. But if they kind of reset all the prices back to like where they were, maybe that would encourage a bit more uh, okay. variety. No? Okay, just a thought. Just yeah, thought. potentially. I mean, <laughs> that would have been good for the people who kind of sold Martinelli mm. or Harlan, because quite a few people sold Harland a few weeks back, didn't they, when he missed a few games. And a lot of people had a lot of value tied up in him and Trippier and things like that. So, um, yeah, I've kind of held on to those players knowing that I, I want to keep them. But um, that won't be the same for everybody. Yep. Right, we're going to look at, uh, well, two drafts of yours uh, in a second. I mean, very loosely, two drafts. The second draft's got about two players, two uh, players. Different, different in it, uh, but we'll see which ones you're yeah. looking at. Uh, before we do that, just a quick mention for TalkSport. If you live in and around London uh, and haven't checked out one of the TalkSport fan zones for the World Cup yet, uh, you should. There's not many more opportunities to do so. Obviously, there's the two semi-final games. There's the third place playoff uh, and final. Uh, it's in Leak Street Arches in Waterloo. Uh, it's uh, five pounds from a uh, ticket for the uh, semi-final uh, game. Um, I think the third place playoff, you've got free tickets as well to get down there. Uh, and then it's £25 for the final um, as well. But you were there last Friday, weren't you, with the scout team? Um, yeah, and you, said, you said it was, it was good. It's a really good atmosphere. I mean, it was a great game. We went down for Netherlands, Argentina. And obviously it looked at 2-0 like it was just going to kind of mm. peter out the Argentina comfortable win. And then Big horse kind of got introduced and the whole place just suddenly livened up and for the pens it was brilliant so yeah i mean if you are in london and you want to watch the games on on massive screens we had um we had a q a with perry groves as well <laughs> um to keep us entertained so there's loads going on i mean it's a pretty good venue to watch the games to be fair yeah yeah so check it out there's a link in the description uh below right before we get into your draft i just want to give you your um whenever we do these this is like your ego boost because uh, if you're not familiar with who Tom is, as well as doing uh, videos with Joe throughout the World Cup and captaincy, uh, as well as being our deputy editor uh, on site as well, Tom has an absolutely insane record uh, in FPL. Five top 1K finishes, seven finishes inside the top 10K. You've had two seasons outside the top 100K in 2015 and last year in That's 2021. But... Your last three seasons, by your standards, Tom, have been not quite where they were at before. What's been going on? No, it's just getting harder. I mm. say this every year, that um, the standards, the, the amount of information around. And I think maybe because I'm more comfortable when I'm kind of flying high and I can maybe stick to the game plan. I can maybe play a little bit safer. When I find that I'm chasing, I tend to do crazy things which is probably what i've done over the past couple of years and when it whereas everybody would go and captain kane i captain son that kind of not not completely mental things to do but things which have maybe kind of stalled me a bit more unconventional times to play chips and things but but this year i feel like i'm in a kind of quite a good spot now with unlimited transfers so i hope rather than kind of get too many red arrows i can kind of keep climbing mm. and um yeah i do i do feel like i need a a big season again after a couple of kind of so-so ones 
Well, 2018, 19, you finished 214th. So yeah. that's the levels you've got to you've got to get back to. But you're having a really good start to the season this year. I mean, in in the inside the top 100k, 84,000, you've got to be happy with that. Absolutely, yeah. I think you know when you're doing well, just things go for you, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, well, and and, and, and <coughs> Phil Phil Foden is like a prime example of that. Um, I bought him in on a game week eight wild card, so just before the. Man United hat trick and the Hall against Southampton. I then sold him when he got dropped, and then I bought him back in game week 16 when he scored, and everything just worked. So I look on fond- a lot fondly upon that player now. Whereas for other people, they obviously got him in and he was benched, and it was a nightmare for him. And I just think sometimes in FPL things can go for mm. you. You're on the right side of luck, and that determines that can turn like an average season into a very very good season. So. Um, long may that continue yep onwards onwards and upwards uh all right let's take a look at your first uh draft so you've got i think every team selection video i do uh between now and game week 17 is going to feature the goalkeeper double up of kepper and ward uh you've got trippier cancelo and gabriel you've got almeron martinelli salah foden uh, darwin which is interesting you've doubled up with salah and darwin uh harland and mitrovic then you've got Andreas, Dallo and Botman uh, on the bench. Strong side. Let's start from the back. Kepa Ward, lock in, locked in? Well, no, not really, because we're a bit unsure where we're at with Kepa, aren't mm. we? The, the last we heard from Potter was that he was stepping up his rehab. And um, there hasn't been anything since, certainly, that I've seen. And if he isn't ready... I think he could be a bit risky. Part of me thought a week ago, well, even if he isn't ready for game week 17, you could possibly play Ward for a couple of weeks if you needed to. But I think that that carries a lot of risk because if Mendy comes in and he plays those two games against Bournemouth and Forest, which are really good fixtures, and he keeps clean sheets in those, is is Kepper just going to be, is he going to walk back in? I'm not so sure. So I think if Potter comes out pre-game week 17 and says Kepper is ready, um, I'll be I'll have the confidence to go for him. But uh, if he isn't, I think I'm going to need to have I'm going to need to have a backup plan there. Mm. And um, Nick Nick Pope was my original keeper, um, but as you can see from a draft, I've gone for Botman in this one to get the double up, and he's he's quite a bit cheaper than Pope, so I do like that. So I'm going to have to look at some other alternatives. But for now, yeah, Kepper and Ward. I'm looking for any excuse not to go with Kepper. Yeah, you know when you see him in everyone's team, and you're not really he's one of those players. I don't. I don't like Chelsea. I don't like them with those three games back to back. I haven't been impressed with them in the last few matches under Potter. Defensively, there's going to be rotation and changes. It's just the fixtures are good and they've got that that double. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I can completely understand why people are doing it. But if there's doubts around Kepper, then I'm avoiding that, I think. But it's fixtures over form, isn't it? It is, the, definitely. The underlying numbers, the performances <clears throat> under Potter pre, pre-World Cup break were, were really bad. So we're kind of punting on it. But, you know, you've got Bournemouth, you've got Forest, then you've got the double game week. And then I think you've got Palace and um, Fulham at home to follow that. So they're, they're, they're great fixtures. Um, he was making a lot of saves as well um, prior to his injury. So um I do quite like Kepper, but um, it's still a bit up in the air at the moment. It is. Who's top of the... So top of the fixture ticker is, is City um, with, with the doubles, but... You know, it's tricky because, you know, we're going to talk about the Man City players in a minute. Using it, using Edison in goal seems like a bit of a, a block on certain things. Uh, Arsenal, I've got really good fixtures. And then it's Chelsea uh, and then it's Fulham. And then you look at some of the other sides. I mean, Southampton are right up there. Yeah. Liverpool, Spurs. You're not really going to be using these goalkeeper I spots. It, I found it really hard because yeah. just before coming on air, I had a look at some of the goalies because I thought the question would be, well, if you don't go to Kepa, who are you going to go for? And it was it was kind of Nick Pope was the only one which mm. I had any real confidence in because, um, you know, Fulham, good fixtures, but I don't trust them defensively. I don't, I'm not particularly a big fan of Leno. Um, I don't, you know, Ramsdale was making hardly any saves prior to um, the, the World Cup break. And I think that there's, there's better value in Gabriel and Ben White and people like that. So it's, it's a really tricky decision. I'm kind of hoping Kepper is fit just to, to make it yeah. an easier decision. Yeah, I guess the, the, the other popular alternative I think is going to be just going Warden, Everson, right? Just ultra cheap, yeah. like as it works so well uh, in game week one. Why wouldn't it work you know, from game week 17? You know, that's... Yeah, they've got two tough fixtures to come back. But after that, they're pretty good for Leicester, mm. aren't they? So yep. um, you might pick up a couple of save points in those first two fixtures. And then, yeah, that, that could be an option, actually. Yep. So. Uh, OK, defensively. So we don't need to talk about Trippier. Everyone's going to have Trippier. Uh, he, he'll be a bit disappointed by the World Cup, I think. Sort of lost his, lost his place yeah. in the end to Walker for those last two games. 
Um, but you know he's going to come straight back to Newcastle, and it's good good for him in a way. He's, he's had a little bit of a rest. Uh, Cancelo and Gabriel. I mean, Gabriel's a, an interesting one. Cancelo's going to be going to be popular unless you're taking all your money kind of out of uh, defence. But yeah, Gabriel over White and Saliba. Uh, what's that? What's you know? What's your thinking there? <clears throat> yeah, I got Gabriel in a few weeks a few weeks back, and um, he's done really well for me. He's got a bit of goal threat. I think Saliba's scored more than Gabriel this year, but if you look at the, the kind of the underlyings, then then Gabriel carries the most threat from from set pieces. Um, ben White is a, is an alternative, but um, I do like that set piece threat with, with Gabriel. And no side has kept more clean sheets than Arsenal this season. No side has conceded fewer goals. So the the fixtures coming back are kind of so so. Um, but this is we've got to think with this unlimited transfers. It's not just like a six game week period. It's going to be ten plus weeks. This side is going to have to last us till until we then play our next wild card around the doubles. So you've got to look at the bigger picture and Arsenal have been one of the best defences in the mm. league so far. So I think getting a bit of coverage in there um, is important and probably saving yourself a transfer further down the line. I think White does that have that bit of rotation worry, doesn't he? Given that he's playing at right back and Tommy Asu's there and they've got Tierney yeah. and all, you know they've, they've got other players that can fill in. Whereas you yeah. know with Gabriel and, and Saliba, and they're around the same price now because Saliba's price has gone up so yeah. much. Um, yeah. It's Yeah, it, it kind of takes away that, that headache. Uh, a little bit. Uh, Cancelo, I mean, Man City haven't been that great defensively, particularly over the last few games. I mean, obviously the big draw of, of Cancelo as well as the uh, attacking returns that he gets, even though his underlying stats are, are quite poor actually this season, given what we've seen yeah, from him in, in previous years. But, you know, he has got that ability just to smash in a 30-yard wonder goal or something. But, I mean, what you get from him is that, that you know, rotation-proof option. Because you look at all the other Man City defenders, you know, Diaz, Laporte, Stones, you know, Akanji, Walker. I mean, you never know which ones are going to start each week, do you? Is, is that why you're going for him, purely for that kind of locked-in potential? Well, I ask myself, do I want to go into a, a potential double game week in 20 without Cancelo? And the, the answer is no. And um, I don't want to be scrambling around to try and get him um, ahead of that. Fixtures to come back are pretty good. Leeds and Everton first up. Um, he obviously hasn't, again, a bit like Trippier, he, he kind of lost his place at the World Cup as well, didn't he? Mm. Um, with Guerrero coming in for the last couple of games. So he'll be well rested. And um, yeah, I think you, you want to kind of be, have a plan to have three City players in for that potential double in 20. So I'd rather just start with Cancelo. He's at an awkward price where if you do go a bit cheaper at the back, it's going to take a bit more kind of, uh, you know, probably take a couple of transfers potentially to get him in. So I think just starting with Cancelo is, um, is best there. Yep. Uh, Almiron, there he is in midfield. Uh, you know, obviously going to be really popular going into the break. I think he's scored uh, in, in a pre-season game. So he looks like he's kind of carrying on that four. Twice. twice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's had a full full rest, obviously, because um, Paraguay haven't been uh, in, in, the, in the World Cup. It's between him and Wilson, isn't it? You've kind of got to have one, I think, of, of, the, of them. But your yeah. strike force is looking strong. So is that why you're... Is that why you're leaning towards Almiron? Well, the alternative is um, I could go Rashford in for Almiron and then drop Darwin down to Wilson. But um, I think this draft looks a bit stronger. I, have, I've never, I haven't owned Almiron this season. No. Have you asked? Well, no, no, I no. wish. <laughs> yeah, which is, I mean, I've always expected him to kind of regress to that pre-22-23 form where he's inconsistent, didn't have that much end product. But I ran a piece on Scout last week, a members piece, where we, we kind of compared it. And he's just basically playing much closer to goal this start. All of his numbers are massively up from last year. Um, not just simply his returns, but he's shooting more often. He's getting better chances. And I think this Newcastle side is is improved so much. I mean, I don't know whether they're, where they're going to finish. You would imagine they'll be top six, I think. Potentially even pushing for Champions League because they haven't got that European distraction, which the other clubs have, which is a massive plus. Um, and I kind of think Almiron... Uh, what is he, 5.5.7, I think. Mm. Um, I just think, yeah. I mean, there was a draft I built when he wasn't in there and um, kind of then went back and had a look at it and thought the value this guy's offering is insane. I think he's eighth for minutes per XG for midfielders or something like that. So, um, yeah, I've got him in there. And um, what it does enable or what it does allow is then you can have that. Darwin isn't quite a premium, but it allows you to go with another big hitter like Darwin and, and Foden as well in there. So it just, um, yeah, he seems like a decent pick at the moment. And one I'd favour over Wilson just, I think. It's a very balanced team, 
this mm. and you know you're you're making use of the extra kind of funds that you've got from from the team value because obviously you wouldn't be able to have this team at the, the start of the season you've got you know very top heavy team with, with Darwin and Haaland um, you've got Salah in there as well you've got an expensive defence with Cancelo uh, Trippier and, and Gabriel um, as well but it's, yeah, it's flexible that's the, it the, the, the price points are covered absolutely right? yeah um, so we can kind of manoeuvre around because I think it's naive to think that game week 17 is just going to continue exactly like it was in game week 16. You know, it's been a big break. The squads are going to be quite different. We don't know where returning players from the World Cup are coming back. So um, having that bit of flexibility and be able to shift round players relatively easy in one transfer is something which I quite like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Martinelli, any temptation to sell him? His ownership's going to stay high. It is three good games for... Arsenal, West Ham. Well, is it, I mean, they're blue on the ticker, but West Ham at yeah. home, tricky, Brighton away, not sure what you're going to get there, Newcastle at home, and then Spurs, and then no, United. It's not a great... I like the fixtures no. for an attacking sense. I've seen a lot of double-ups with people who are going with Saka in there, and, and Ketia mm. as well, who obviously are going to be a popular option with Jesus out. But I don't think these fixtures warrant an attacking double-up. I, I don't want to lose Martinelli because I've got him for £6 million, so he's going to stay. Um, but I just don't know if that their top half defences aren't they West Ham, Brighton, Newcastle Tottenham, United so yeah I'm kind of thinking leave it with Martinelli for now and then possibly post game week 21 because they've got that double in 23 haven't they, that might be the time then mm. to, to look to add a Saka um, to the mix then potentially but Nketiah um you know, he's six point five. He's gonna if he's starting every game, he's gonna be good value. But I'm just not not so keen on the double up right now. I might get rid of him, you know. Yeah. Like I can. And what and what leave Arsenal all together? Yeah, or, I think or, so. Yeah. Like, but I did this game week one, and it went terribly because he, he was scoring every week, and he can probably do it again. But I, I, I do kind of look at these drafts sometimes, and it's, especially when you're doing a lot of these series and looking at people's drafts, looking on Twitter, looking on Scout, and seeing a lot of the same players. I always try and see, well, which of these players can I, you know, go against? Go against? That's just yeah. how I play. And sometimes it goes absolutely terribly like it did at the start of the season when I went against yeah, about but... five of the top owned players and they all and they all delivered each week. But sometimes you, I just look at those, like, it's just interesting. You look at that, you look at the fixture ticket and I can see why, you know, Arsenal are up there. But just in my mind, I think they're not going to be as easy as... Maybe no, I don't. Think, I don't see any massive wins in that five-game stretch. So yeah, they might they might start mm. picking off teams and win one nil, two one, that kind of thing. But I don't see any massive victories for them. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, if I hadn't got Martinelli at six million, I might be a little bit more um, mm. kind of open to it. But I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy keeping him there for now. But but yeah, that's definitely what I'm not looking to add add anybody else from Arsenal up from. Yeah, uh, let's talk about the double Liverpool attack yeah. you've gone with. Uh, no Trent in defence. Uh, just weird, isn't it? It's just weird that no one's really considering uh, yeah. Trent. Well, maybe some people are, but it'd be a, it'd be a pretty big differential, um, I think, because uh, he hasn't delivered. Um, but you've gone for Salah and Darwin, which is, I mean, that's a lot of eggs in the Liverpool yeah. attack basket. You've got Villa, you've got your team in the first game, uh, Villa away, uh, and then Leicester, and then Brentford, and then Brighton. It's, I mean, it's not, I mean, Villa have, have, have looked a bit better under Emery. Leicester have improved defensively. You know, Brentford have, have, have had some good wins, and then Brighton, and then Chelsea. I don't know. It's, again, it's not an amazing group right. of fixtures um, for Liverpool. You double up with the attack. What's, what's the thinking there? Well, I always wanted to start with Salah. He hasn't kind of left any drafts or anything like that. Um, and I think then we've since had news that Diaz has got another injury in this Dubai training camp. So. Jota isn't going to probably be back till the start of February. So we've got two players out, and I just think that boosts Darwin's minutes a little bit more. Um, I think Salah's going to play as well a lot with Firmino, probably potentially Firmino up front and Darwin coming in off the left. Um, but I think Firmino up front, I think, is good for Salah. Um, and I think, yeah, he, he isn't going anywhere. So it was always a case of, is it just going to be Salah or is it going to be Salah and Darwin? And Darwin scares me when I don't own him and I watch mm. him play because he's just an absolute lunatic in terms of his shots. It's just <laughs> like, I mean, what, I made a couple of notes. He's averaging 5.7 shots per 90, 1.75 big chances per 90. So just under two big chances per match. And he's just like a shot monster. So he's like, he's one of those players where at 9 million, I think he's going to keep on improving in, in that Liverpool setup. And um, he's... 
I'm kind of finding it quite hard to overlook him there. I mean, the fixtures, like you say, are so-so, but Villa, um, we've conceded in both matches. We might be improving in those two matches under MRA, but we've, we've conceded in mm. both of them. Leicester, again, improving, but Leicester are the type of team who are going to commit bodies forward. They probably will go for it at Anfield, and that could be good for him. And then it's Brentford after that. So um, Darwin feels... I don't think I've owned Darwin this year, and it feels like quite an exciting player to come back in with. He is exciting until you watch him miss and hit the post. And <laughs> Well, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's a proper roller coaster when it you're is. watching those matches, doesn't it? Remember the Spurs game when within just yeah. a few minutes he was firing off these random shots and I mean he'd taken about three or four shots inside the first half hour I think but, very uh, very disappointing in the um, you know in, in, the, in the World Cup you know Uruguay is absolutely. getting knocked out in the groups and you know that, especially that goalless <clears throat> draw I think in, in the first game uh, yeah. there's a lot of hopes pinned on Nunes and he, and he didn't deliver so yeah he's yeah. going to have to step it up at, at Liverpool because he's had a mixed start to his Liverpool career um, Perhaps, yeah, the, the alternative there is Wilson, mm. and that would mean then going Rashford over Almiron, and I could do that, but um, I just think this Diaz injury is, I think Darwin's going to be playing most games, and that's probably good enough for me. Yeah, I guess the alternative is, though, that it's interesting because, I mean, Liverpool, when Liverpool lose attackers, you think, okay, their new attackers are more nailed up, but you actually think, okay, are they losing a lot of creativity now with Diaz and, and Jota both, both Potentially, missing? but I... Um, I only I was writing, writing some scout notes earlier, mm. and Thiago's back and, and played very well for them. I think he's like a key player. I think if they can get him into midfield, playing regularly again, I think Thiago that adds a bit of creativity. I think if they can get Alexander Arnold, who hasn't who hasn't played hardly any minutes, um, the, that's where the creativity I think comes from at Liverpool. And I think if you've got a front line as well, which is led by Firmino, with with Darwin and Salah off him, he's obviously more of a creator as well than somebody like Jota leading the line. So I think that they're, they're, they're still going to create enough. And I think even when they've been terrible this season, Liverpool, <laughs> their attacking numbers have largely been OK. It's been defensively that they've struggled. So um, at the moment, I'm OK with that. We'll see where I land in a, in a week or so. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, F- first draft I've seen with, with the double um, Liverpool tax. Yeah. Normally one, people are going one or, one or the other. Um, yeah. Foden. Let's talk about Foden quickly. Uh, you know, Foden versus De Bruyne. I think that's probably quite a big decision that a lot of people are making. Obviously, really disappointing. You talk about disappointing World Cups for, for Belgium, but even more so De Bruyne. I think he had the worst of everyone, given the expectations yeah. on him. Um, he'll be delighted to be back at City where he's the hero. And, and you know, and you've got to think he's got a good chance of starting those, those first three games as well when it's, you know, uh, going to be rotation central for a lot of other players. Uh, you've gone for Foden though obviously not a bad um, sort of replacement but did miss out a couple of games under under Pep did. yeah and that's the worry I think you get De Bruyne and you get him because he's probably guaranteed those minutes isn't he and um, when Foden was when we forget Foden was completely nailed up until what was it like game week 11 or something like that he played every single game mm. in the City now when he's playing every single game and De Bruyne is I'm more than happy to own Foden and take the additional money and move that in other areas. Foden, I think, has more of a goal threat than, than De Bruyne or anyway, certainly in the box. Um, so it's all about those minutes. And if I feel confident that Foden is going to get those minutes, I'm, I'm really happy to go there. And I, and I would much rather it in terms of the team structure have Foden in there over mm. De Bruyne. Um, but it is just trying to trying to nail that. If, if, is he going to get starts? You want him for that Leeds fixture, don't you? Um, they can struggle up against players like like Foden, and and I think he could be great for that. But um, it's going to it's going to be risky because Pep's going to come out and he's probably not going to say much, is he? No, but, no, um, definitely not. I, I can see I can see him being back in the starting eleven. Um, he played. He started game week sixteen, didn't he? He played for mm. full ninety minutes, so he was back in the eleven pre World Cup. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think you'll play this one. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're going to go for Salah Haaland and, and De Bruyne, you, you have to make quite significant, um, yeah. you know, sort of downgrades elsewhere. You know, you no can cancelo. That, you can do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you probably have to go Darwin down to a Wilson and then Cancelo down to a cheaper defender yeah. or something like that. But yeah, I think like you say, that the price structure that you've got, I think is really nice because even someone like Darwin that allows you to move down to anyone sort of from, from 9 yeah. million or, or below yeah it's, it's very nice um, final play then uh, we don't need to talk about Haaland everyone's going to have Haaland no. uh, Mitrovic uh, you know Fulham have obviously got that double game week in 19 uh, Leicester away and Chelsea at home they've got decent games against Palace and Southampton 
to start. He's he's quite important, I think, Mitrovic, uh, to to start with. You know, Serbia got knocked out early as well. No danger of rotation with him. Overall, the injuries. Not much else to say, but he's he's a strong option. Yeah, I think so. He's got nine goals in twelve so far, so really decent option. He is on four yellow cards, so mm. um, I've, I've seen some people say is he risky, but I just don't. I think you've got to kind of deal with that when it if it if it happens and if it comes to fruition. What you don't want to do is say, "Oh, I'm going to wait till he gets that yellow card," because the fixtures, like you say, are good. If they were bad leading up to game week nineteen, then I could understand that. But he's got Palace and Southampton. Um, then the double, and then that's the point. Then you want to hop off him. So hopefully you can get through those games without a yellow. But it is something to be worried about, especially if you're going for somebody like Kane as well, who is another player who's on four yellow cards. So Any players? To be wary of. Yeah, definitely. And, and Kane as well, right? On on four. Yeah. 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 Um, any players you're coveting here that you don't have? We're going to talk about your Chelsea players uh, in a second. You've mentioned Rashford. Uh, mm. Any anyone else that you're kind of thinking you might? shoehorn in somewhere looked at Nketiah but then mm. obviously due to what we said before I'm kind of moving away from him um, Kane as well but then I did see earlier that Richarlison may have picked up this knock on World Cup duty now then a player like Kulisevsky becomes a bit more appealing um, because he'll probably play I'm definitely starting so, with him so yeah because that's why that Foden spot's quite nice in my team where you can drop down from 8.3. There's a host of players, isn't there? You'll see it in my next draft. That's what I've done, gone to another player in and around that price. But Kulisevsky is another player. Um, it means that you don't have to go for a premium like Kane or Son, and you've got him then for that potential double. And some pretty decent fixtures re- re- leading up to it as well. What is it? Brentford, Villa Palace. Mm. So, um, yeah, he's a player which I hadn't been thinking about at all. And now because of this potential with Charles and injury, he could, he could kind of sneak in maybe. Yep. I do like him. Really. Yep. Nice. Speaking of sneaking players in, uh, obviously with Chelsea's good run, uh, we've tried to sneak in a couple of Chelsea, extra Chelsea players into here. It's pretty slim pickings, uh, isn't it? We have seen yeah. some training images of, of Rhys James uh, back uh, with new hair as well. I think purple, purple highlights or something like that. Oh, I didn't see that. Didn't you see that? So, no? no, no, very no, nice. Very nice. Yeah, but <laughs> and Mason Mount, who is not, I don't think, going to dye his hair purple at any point. He's, he's way too prim and proper. Uh, for that, so this is Foden coming out for Mount, uh, mm. and it's someone else coming out for James. I can't remember. Dallow, Dallow, Dallow coming out for James. Up to James. Okay. Yeah. So um, those Chelsea fixtures, I mean, they are that they're so good. It's Bournemouth, Forest, and then it's a double, and then it's Palace. Um, so I was looking at Mount, and it and it's fixtures over over four. He had that little spell under Potter when he scored a couple against mm. my team Villa, and I think he had got a couple of assists the week before that. So he's shown moments, but the whole Chelsea team is so uninspiring that this really is a a massive punt, I think, if you're going for a couple of their players. But if Rhys James is fit, then I think he makes the whole team better, doesn't he? He allows them to play with wing-backs. And um, if James is fit, I don't know if I want to go without him, really, knowing what he's he's capable of doing. There's no way he starts three games in a row, though. No, but the... The schedule for Chelsea is probably the kindest out of anybody from them. So they play um, they play on the Tuesday, which is the, the 27th. And then, then the next time they're in action, um, when my computer loads up, is actually the Sunday. So there's a good gap there. And then the game after that is on the Thursday. So as far as rest, we'll run, we'll run a rest time article mm, on the scout okay. before we come back. But I would be very surprised if Chelsea don't have the best of the lot. I still get it. I still get what you're saying. They're going to handle him very carefully, aren't they? Um, but then if he... This is quite a strong squad that I've built. So if he... The worry is if he comes on for like 10 minutes at the end. Mm. But if he were to be given a... If he were to miss, say, the game in the middle or something like that, that wouldn't be... That wouldn't be terrible. No, I mean, I've got... I've got tri- I've, I've put this together on FPL team. Yeah, you can't see it because we're pre-recording. But I've got James Cancelo and Gabriel starting and Trippier on your bench. Because, yeah. I mean, you don't really want to bench Trippier, but... You're not going to bench no, James at home to Bournemouth. Maybe no. Trippier plays over Gabriel, but it's a bit of a coin flip, I think. Yeah, I think in a lot of these squads we're building, there'll be a few benching headaches. Mm. Game week 17 and 18, I think it clears up after that, then it's a bit easier. But um, yeah, I'm not ruling it out because I've always been a fixtures kind of manager and I think that they are probably the best fixtures out the lot to begin with. And um, 
who's to say Mount won't come back and kind of get back to <laughs> that kind of top level? It, it's punty, but um, oh, I don't mind. That. My start so, with Mason Mount, it's a nightmare. Yeah, all the well, eight million, of all the eight million mids, it was the only one that didn't get any returns in like five weeks. <laughs> yeah, well, I was close to him. I think I put a draft with him, and it was only a few days before yeah. we kicked off. So um, I don't think he was a bad pick at all. It's just it's the way it goes sometimes, sometimes isn't it? Yep, so, sometimes how it goes. Uh, Tom, that is awesome. Hopefully everyone uh, watching and listening has enjoyed uh, that. Let us know what you think of Tom's drafts in the uh, in the comments below. Let us know what you think of the Chelsea players. It's very interesting about the, the Chelsea recovery uh, period. So do uh, keep your eye on Scout and, and look out for that as well because that is going to be absolutely key as it always is um, over Xmas. Uh, Tom, I know you've got a busy day. I'm going to let you go. Thanks for joining me uh, and we'll talk again very soon. Right, thanks for having me. See you soon.